there's nothing quite like writing solo. I'm Kyle Peck, and this is Cyrex Productions. If you like my film reviews and videos, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Cyrex Productions. Or you can follow me at facebook.com slash Kyle Peck fan page. The Star Wars franchise brings back another anthology film, but this time with the upbringings of a younger Solo becoming the Solo that we know. But with Han passing away during The Force Awakens, if you have not watched that yet and you are watching this, that is spoilers, so shame on you. Will there be anything new? This is my review of their next epic space adventure, Solo, A Star Wars Story. This film review is going to include many spoilers, so please stop what you're doing, watch it, and come back. And if you haven't, that is on you. Solo, A Star Wars Story is officially the 10th live-action sci-fi film of the Star Wars franchise, set after the events of 2016's Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and prior to the events of Episode 4, A New Hope directed by Ron Howard and produced by Lucasfilm, centering on Alden Ehrenreich's younger Han Solo. Described more as a Western, the scoundrel accepts a life-changing job from his criminal mentor, Woody Harrelson's Tobias Beckett, that sets him up on the Solo everyone knows in his first meeting with Yuno Suotomo's Chewbacca, Donald Glover's Lano Calrissian, and the Millennium Falcon itself. Unfortunately, there was already some production buzz that leaked out publicly before the film's release, like replacing the film's original directors, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller for Ron Howard, replacing actor Michael K. Williams originally as the quote-unquote half-mountain lion slash half-human, end quote, motion-captured alien Dryden Voss for Paul Bettany as the scarred human Dryden Voss because of Williams' unavailability for the film reshoots, and initial concerns of an iconic character's origin story who already died tragically during episode seven, The Force Awakens that ultimately makes this film an expansive but unnecessary addition to the Star Wars franchise. And all of their fumbles are shown here. Actor Alden Ehrenreich performs well enough, even under a lot of scrutiny, to create his own iteration of the charming and risk-taking gunslinger without being a direct ripoff. But the film's creative writing team is also partly to blame in just showcasing how he got everything he needed by the film's end, rather than also adding how he changed into the smuggler everyone knows in A New Hope. The franchise's other legacy characters are also the main popcorn entertainment, with Yuna Suwatomo getting the opportunity for Chewbacca to be a true supporting role with his own agendas than just as Han's sidekick, and Donald Glover recapturing and channeling the glorified bravado and tenderness as the best dressed and deceitful cape wearing gambler that is Lando Calrissian. However, most of its new seasoned ensemble cast have sadly inconsistent character arcs. Woody Harrelson's Tobias is a stiffly grizzled thief and predictable mentor. Thandy Newton as Tobias' wife and fellow criminal Val performs more as a full-fledged personality than as a full-fledged character. Actress Amelia Clark as Han's old flame turned renegade survivor Kira isn't as striking as a femme fatale the film wanted to make her out to be. John Favaro as the voice of the wives-cracking four-armed Ardenian Rio Durant is pretty much there for humor. And the Dryden Voss replacement, Paul Bettany, is so bad that his vague plans and hollow threats don't even make him that terrifying as an antagonist. The one new casting exception is actress Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who voices Lando's fiercely independent android and sharply cunning pilot companion, L337, whose conversations with Lando are the best in the film, and almost steals the whole film from Han himself and her added implementation into the Millennium Falcon could very well be important in the years to come. Lastly, it's not only great to see inspirations of World War II and Westerns turned into great fictional action scenes that George Lucas inspired to create, but bringing back practical effects in its amazingly detailed creatures, locale, and ships, including the clean-looking Millennium Falcon, is a fan service that Star Wars veterans and newcomers experiencing these lived-in worlds can certainly appreciate. Therefore, Solo, A Star Wars Story is definitely rough around the edges, with many narrative inconsistencies and an already plagued origin story, but the few iconic characters and commitment to repackaging the franchise's nostalgia is engaging and entertaining enough as an extended cornerstone of Star Wars. I give Solo, A Star Wars Story, 5.5 out of 10 stars. I'm Kyle Peck, and get your Chewy on. <laughs>